Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and we're going to create a single page scrapbook layout today focusing on the corner embellishment cluster. So you can see I have epic vibes on my desk and it's scraps I've already cut into this paper pack and I absolutely love it so I did order another one. I have another little pile of smaller scraps here and then I have the sticker sheet. There's still quite a bit of the sticker sheet. They're falling off here because I always remove the adhesive to use them like die cuts and then the beach treasures stamp and thin cut set I don't know what it is I just love beach in, you know themed stamps and so I collect these and this one's gorgeous I love the shells and just the look of them the seahorse and of course there's some nice sentiments and title you know options on there as well so let me clear this up and we will get started I always like to work on my Versamat. It is just super handy to help get those paper layers straight. And there's a foam back for stamping, which, you know, if you've been watching my channel, you've seen me do that quite a bit. I'm going to build this layout on a sheet of White Daisy cardstock. Now I mentioned that I had already cut into this paper pack, so these pieces are left over. What I did with this one is use the outside frame for another layout and I got this center out to save and you'll see how easy it is to incorporate onto a layout. And then this piece I had obviously used the other side for a border on another layout. But when I start looking at, you know, what pieces I have to work with, you know, sometimes you just, you don't even need to make any cuts. That just comes together beautifully. I'm going to trim a little bit off the bottom. You could just go all the way to the corner, but I like to have that little white border. You know, sometimes cutting into a brand new paper pack is the hardest part, but once it's already cut, you know, it's just things tend to come together a little bit easier. So let me just trim this off and that's going to give us that nice white border all the way around. And before I do that, I'm going to add some ink to the edges of this piece. There is espresso brown in this paper pack, so rather than black, I'm going to use the espresso ink to ink up my edges. And I won't make you watch the whole process, but I just use my little Ranger sponge dauber tool and go around the edge. You can take the, you know, ink pad itself and go direct to paper, but it gives you a little bit different look. I like to use the uh, little hand, you know, ink blending tool here because it gives me a little bit more control because I don't want a crazy amount of color. I just want those edges to be finished off. I do want to mention that if you love this good vibes, I may have called it epic vibes in the beginning. If I did, it's actually good vibes. <laughs> I think I don't know why I want to keep calling it epic vibes, but since it is a national scrapbooking day special, it is only available through the month of May. So just keep that in mind if you like this paper pack. So we got all of our edges inked and you can see that makes a big difference when you do lay that down against that white cardstock. It just gives it that little bit of definition and separation. And actually, I think I want to add one more layer. I've cut some espresso cardstock. This I forgot to mention in the beginning. This is a nine by nine square. So I cut a little piece of espresso just to give that nice chocolatey color around the edge of this glacier pattern paper. And I love that. That looks perfect. What I'm going to do because I love this paper so much is just make little tick marks just inside the edge of where this square is. So now I can remove that portion and save it for another project. So I've had some questions about how to gut papers here on my channel. So I thought I would just show you this is one way you can do it. And I'm just lighting my little blade not all the way down. And then for the centerpiece, you just put it down where you want to cut. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm struggling, didn't quite get to the corners there and there so we now we have that piece for later so I'm going to set this into place I'm not going to adhere it yet because we're going to do some background stamping here in a moment I have one photo it's just shy of a five by seven it is six and a half by five and I'm going to just document the story behind this photo of my friends and I I thought it'd be fun to add some stamping to the background this is the brush stroke stamp set and it is from the May and June catalog I've got the page marked here so you can see it's just like a background and texture stamp but it's a little bit different if you've been watching my channel for a while you know how much I love perfectly imperfect patterns one of my most used favorite stamp sets this one gives you a little bit different look so I just really get excited about these stamps because you can do so many cool things with them so I have selected this larger uh, brush stroke here and I have that on my block 
I'm gonna create the look of sand. So I think almond ink will be a good color for that. And what I'm gonna do is just mark where I have my layout here. Let's see. Uh, make sure I'm happy with the placement. And then I'm just gonna put a little pencil mark underneath there. One in the middle. And this is just a rough guide. And that's gonna show me where I need to put my stamp. You know, I wanna make sure that it extends beyond that area. I'm going to flip my Versamat over. If you remember in the beginning, I mentioned it has the foam back and that makes a really great platform for stamping. It's going to you know, counteract any of those imperfections in your work surface that may prevent you from getting a good impression. So I highly recommend stamping on the foam. So I'm just lining this up. I want it coming out from under that pattern paper. So I just lifted up the corner and then we're going to create a border around the edge. And it's okay if it overlaps a little bit, I'm going to add a smaller little detail stamp just to kind of smooth those transitions a bit and you won't even notice it once we are finished so we're going all the way around I think that looks pretty good and now I can um, add that tiny little cluster there it's like little splatter or in this case I am using it like sand so again I'm just kind of smoothing those transitions and adding even more visual texture to this stamped border I kind of had this idea in my head and sometimes those ideas don't always translate onto paper, but today I think it's going to. I'm liking the way this little sand is coming to life. So let me bring these back in here and get that situated. So we're going to start building our corner embellishment clusters and I like to start with the title. Now what's really nice about this type of title is that it naturally creates a corner frame. So to me that's going to fit perfectly in this lower left hand corner starting my embellishment cluster to frame this photo in. Now I get asked quite a bit um, how I take the adhesive off the back of my stickers. This is the anti-static powder tool so it's for embossing and I literally just pat it. It has like a little fine powder in there and it removes the adhesive. You could pat it on your clothes, on your arm, different things like that. When I pat it on my pants it gets lint all over it so I don't like to do that but you can find that in the core catalog in the very back or towards the back there are tools for heat embossing and that's what this little uh, you know powder pouch is here so it just removes the static from your cardstock so you can uh, heat emboss and the powder only sticks where you want it to stick but that's how I remove the adhesive when it comes to building embellishment clusters, you hear a lot of talk about the visual triangle, which is definitely a useful tool when, you know, figuring out where to place things. But you can also focus on building corner embellishment clusters. So I'm going to create like a diagonal across the layout. Let me grab my Beach Treasure stamp and Thin Cuts here. If you've never had a Close to My Heart stamp, I love the organization here. They come in this nice little heavy duty envelope, the stamp, you get a little piece of foam to stamp on and the coordinating thin cuts on their own magnetic sheet all in one envelope. So it's really convenient. I'm picking up my stamps here with the blocks. We've got the seahorse, the sea star and the sand dollar. And then I'm going to bring in some scraps of paper. I've got white daisy, nectarine and shortbread. I'm, I'm going to color some of the so I grab my intense black ink um, that way I can use my spectrum noir tri-blend alcohol markers to add some color to these images but for my sea star I'm going to stamp that right on orange cardstock with nectarine color and then for the sand dollar I chose shortbread which I really love this color and I'm going to add a little bit of almond with my ink blending tool just to give it a little bit of interest to the center of the sand dollar Stamping these images on colored cardstock is a great option if you don't have markers to shade these images in and so you can still get those custom embellishments that coordinate with your project. But for the seahorse here, I'm going to color him in with the, I have the blue turquoise blend marker and the coral blend. Now this again, this is a tiny image so I'm not going to go crazy with the, you know, there's three different tones in the tri-blend marker so you can do some really neat shading techniques. But on these tiny images I'm just using you know the medium and then I'm going to add some coral to his little cheek here and his belly and give him some color that way. The bullet tip on these markers is nice because it allows you to get into these intricate little designs on the stamped images. 
I went ahead and got them die cut off camera and so now we have more embellishments to work with to build our little clusters here. So I'm going to start with this little floral cluster from the sticker sheet and then we're just going to start layering. So this seahorse is looking in towards the photo and that is creating a natural L shape around the you know photo just framing it in really nicely. So I like to layer some of the elements over the top of the photo. Typically I'll put some behind the picture but in this case I'm layering them all over the corner following that angle. So I want to offset the flowers by placing another flower and I went ahead and stamped a second sand dollar and I'll tuck that one in just right there. Now these are seashell sequins. These are so pretty and you have different colors. There's like the gold and the silver and kind of like an opalescent uh, seashell. They're just really neat. They have adhesive backing on them. So I'm just tucking these in for a little bit of shine and texture and just to go along they match perfectly this is a stamp from the same beach treasures that says sandy toes and so i like to have word stickers in my embellishment clusters I went through my pile of scraps from this collection and I just wanted a little something in this lower hand corner to kind of just visually add some weight and anchor my photo. So I thought this would be nice. Let me put my title back in place. And then there's this little strip of this espresso floral pattern paper. And you know what? I'm going to flip that over because it's already cut on an angle on the opposite side. So let's see what that looks like. And yeah, I think that adds a little bit of interest. I like it. For my embellishment clusters, I am a huge fan of adding some dimension. So this is the bottom layer. This flower is on the bottom layer of our embellishment cluster, if that makes sense. But the tail end that's poking out the top, I'm going to add adhesive foam just to that portion and then a little glue to the portion that sits on the bottom. So it's giving it, you know, it's the bottom layer but we're still giving it some dimension up on the top there and I just think that's a neat look. Everything else I adhered directly down to the page and then I added a little foam tape to the title element here and then I will pop that up. The foam really sticks to those glossy photos so make sure you have it where you want it before you press down. I grabbed that little sand cluster splatter stamp and I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit to the glacier pattern paper as well. So just a couple of those scattered about. And then I'm going to add some journaling in the lower right hand area. So I printed this out. This is the Avery clear matte shipping labels. I absolutely love this. You just type it up in a Word document, run it through your printer and then cut it down to size. And it just disappears onto your layout out and allows that pattern paper to show through. It's such a cool look and so easy to use and I get that on Amazon. You want to give that a good burnish so that the haziness goes away and it's a clear sticker but this layout came together so quickly and the corner embellishment clusters are such an easy go-to method. They frame in the photo, they draw your eye to the center where the photo is and it just seems to work every time. Hello there everyone, welcome back. I'm Erin and I have a dog hair on my paper. Yeah, never mind that. All joking aside, if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. Everything I used to create today's layout is listed in the description box below. And for more inspiration featuring good vibes, you want to watch this video right here. Bye!